Hello guys, Colton Tack on Sonic and OKKO for NAC 21 here. Welcome back to the 2021 edition of the walkthrough of the Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. This is part 3. In the previous two parts, we had checked out the Windows XP Home... We, had, we checked out the Windows XP Tour for, this, for the previous two parts. So in this part, we're going to eventually do like... I think we're going to try to check out... A Microsoft Money tutorial, but before we do that, here are the sponsors. So, this part of the walkthrough is sponsored by the Backyard Again's It's Great to Be a Ghost and the Backyard Again's The Legend of the Volcano Sisters on DVD. So, let's just get to the, to the computer. Let's just let's turn this baby on. Good old Dell screen, good old Dell startup screen right here. It's very nostalgic. Windows XP startup screen is also nostalgic. Childhood. Complete childhood. Let's put this guy down. Let's get, get a log in. go to the my computer because that's where we could find the, the Microsoft money tutorials sorry about the mouse by the way it's not doing a good job today I can't tell if it's because of like because of how it's acting or if it's because of this desk I mean the mouse still works but not sure what to say Gotta maximize this guy. It's gotta maximize this window. And you know, just like just like with the Windows XP tour, we're gonna watch the Microsoft Money tutorials with the lights turned off. I mean, I know we had this computer for like 17 years, but then again, this is a computer that works like a charm. It really is. It it really it really does work like a charm. Appears being so damn like freaking slow. Okay, let's go to which folder is it in? I think it's in like program files. Let's try to go in there. There it is, Microsoft Money. Let's, let's go in there. Freaking mouse doesn't want to cooperate. Okay, media. AV help. And click on 02MT. That's the first tutorial we're going to go to, which was on, it's on manage your taxes. So let's just turn this, let's turn the, turn the light off. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit on the speakers. Let's just hope it's not too loud. So let's go. The manage your taxes tutorial on Microsoft Money. Let's go. taxes are going to be a snap now that we use Microsoft Money. How's that? Well, let's take a look at our Money homepage. We can switch the homepage view to show just our tax information. Then at tax time, Money uses all of our financial information to help us file our taxes. So what do we do to get ready? Money can help us find any deductions we're eligible for. We just have to answer a few questions. Oh, I see. Money tells us about available deductions, medical expenses, donations, and home mortgage interest. Then it lets us know which deductions we might be able to take at tax time. Money can even help us track these deductions throughout the year. Here, Money can demonstrate the tax implications of selling stocks. And I bet these links on the homepage take us to the MSN Money website, where we can keep up to date on late-breaking tax news and also reference informative tax articles. They sure do. And whenever we want to find out how much we owe in taxes, we can go to the tax estimator where money takes all our financial information, including our income, and our deductions, 
and gives us a good sense of what our taxes will be. I see that we fill in some of these numbers, but money fills in the rest for us. What if we want to see the figures that money's using to do this estimate? It's easy. If we go to the tax line manager, we can review the tax line categories and their totals. Just click a category and then click Go to Details. Now we can see all the individual entries that made up that tax line total. Looks like we can even open an individual entry. I sure would like to know how much to withhold, so we don't pay too much or too little come tax time. Well, take a look at this. If we go to the tax withholding estimator, we can find out if we are over or under withholding. I see. We just choose whether we want to get a refund or owe taxes, and how much we want it to be. And then we enter our paycheck information. I see. Here, it looks like we're supposed to enter our allowances. And now, here's our result. How did money figure it so exactly? It calculated the extra amount we need to withhold on top of the normal required withholdings. So we'll come out just right. All I have to do is take this figure into my payroll department and have them adjust the withholding. If we prefer, we can set up a monthly bill to help us save more by April 15th, or update our budget to reflect an IRS refund. Our options for April 15th seem pretty straightforward. They are. With money, we'll be ready to use a tax program, file our taxes by hand, or turn our information over to an accountant. We can even file our taxes on the web. You're right, Amy. Money will definitely make it easier to get our taxes ready this year. Speaking of April 15th, I think tax day is like... Well, I don't think tax day is in like April anymore. I, I don't know what to say, but... I don't... Is, a, is tax day on April 15th this year? I'm probably going to have to take a look at the calendar after this video. Well, maybe I'll just check anyway, but... Maybe I'll just check for now... I'll be right back after I check. Okay, so I'm back. I checked to see if tax day for this year was on April 15th. Well, it's not. It's actually on May 17th, to be honest. It's actually on a different day this time. So, yeah, it's a bit much different now. I don't know why they would freaking change the date for tax day to May 17th. That's just so stupid. Like, tax day is April, April it's every April 15th. It's not, it's not on May 17th. They must have got their dates mixed up or something. I don't know why they would do that. But anyway, now we're going to move on to the next tutorial before we go. And that's going to be on the checks and balances or whatever this is called. So let me just try to open it and see what it says. So I'm trying to minimize this for a minute. Okay, so it says enter checks and deposits. So I did not understand what this said, but let's, let's just get to it. Let's go. Stupid mouse, come on. All right, let's go. Say, this kind of looks like a checkbook. Here's a register up here. That's the idea. And down here are the forms for withdrawals, deposits, and transfers. So I fill them out like a check or deposit slip. Exactly. There's a tab for each kind of transaction. Let's enter those checks from our shopping trip today, and you'll see how it works. I assume I start by clicking the tab for the kind of transaction I'm entering? Right. We're entering this first check for our new easy chair, so that's a withdrawal. Click New to activate the form. First, you type the check number. Okay. I see that money puts in today's date. Now, pay to Tasmanian Traders. We got a good deal on this purchase. 153.67. Done. Should I enter anything in this category box? You don't have to. But if we categorize our expenses and income, we'll be able to track where our money goes. I get it. Money summarizes our expenses using these categories. This should give us a better picture of our finances. It should, especially with the reports we can create. This also helps if we do a budget, lifetime plan, or if we need an expense summary for taxes. So I click the arrow, scroll through the list, and click the category I want. This would be household furnishings. As soon as you click enter, you're done, and it's in the register. Money does the subtraction for me. We don't have to worry about math mistakes anymore. Now we're ready for the next one that bill to the telephone company. Money has a real shortcut here. What's that? See this common withdrawals button? Yeah. Click it and then point to upcoming bills. When we first set up money, we specified our regular bills. Those now appear in this list. 
Click the phone company on the list. Look, money fills in most of the check information for me. I just have to put in the exact amount. Again, we click enter and it shows up in the register. So once we start using money checks, we can just type in our regular payments like this and then print the checks. What about deposits? We put in that tax refund check yesterday. Click the deposit tab. In the from field, say where the check came from. That is, the county. Hey, 25 bucks for us. Hmm. How do we categorize this? Oh, other income, state and local tax refund. You need to change the date because you made the deposit yesterday. Here's a neat trick. Click this little arrow and then click the date. Cool. I'll say what it was for. Every little bit helps. We have one more check to enter. Yes, my new skis. You know, you can type directly into the check register if you want. How's that? Well, up here, you turn off the checkbook form. Now you can click new or just click in the blank line. Okay, it looks like money fills in the check number and date automatically. So I just type Alpine Ski Center right in here. Hey, look at this. Money made a good guess for the category. Now type the check amount and you're done. So with money, we can keep accurate records of our checking account. And our other accounts too. We can use this same process to show account activity in our savings, brokerage, and even our credit card accounts. Then money can summarize this information to help us track our expenses, organize our taxes, and plan our finances. And that's it. So that's where we're gonna, that's where we're going to stop for today. So. Let's just turn the lights back on before we shut this computer down. So let's let's go do that. There we go. Got the lights turned back on. So all right, let's let's, let's turn let's turn this baby off. Let's turn this freaking awesome computer off. Let's go. All right. So that's gonna conclude part three of the 2021 edition of the walkthrough, the Dell Dimension 4600, running Windows XP Home Edition. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Colton Tackett on Sonic and OKKO OK Fanatics 2021. Signing off. See you in the next video. Yep. Yep. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, everybody.